The Demon Core was supposed to be a weapon of mass destruction, but it became a silent killer of its own creators. Join us as we uncover the tragic history of this deadly sphere and what it revealed about the dangers of nuclear energy. Greetings, time travelers. Welcome to Searching History, your portal to the past's most remarkable events. Among some of the most destructive acts of violence between humans were the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the final stages of World War II. The bombs were called Little Boy and Fat Man. Together, it's estimated around 200,000 lives were lost from the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These bombs played a big role in ending World War II, as we all know. But did you know there was almost a third bomb? While the world was dealing with the destruction from Little Boy and Fat Man, scientists at Los Alamos, where the Manhattan Project started, were putting the finishing touches on another bomb. If Japan didn't surrender on August 15, 1945, the plan was to use this third bomb on another Japanese city just four days later. Inside this unrealized nuclear device was a radioactive core they called Rufus as a nickname, but history knows it by a different name, the Demon Core. This 6.2 kilogram ball of plutonium almost caused destruction, even though it was never detonated. When Japan surrendered after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Demon Core was no longer needed for its original purpose, but it still had importance. Nuclear fission, the process that makes nuclear weapons so destructive, was discovered less than a decade before. This made the Demon Core cutting-edge technology based on newly developed science not fully understood yet. Understanding nuclear fission had huge implications for humanity, both good and bad. Beyond making more powerful weapons, fission could be used for less catastrophic and more constructive things too. Fission happens when an atom splits into two, releasing a lot of energy. It also emits neutrons that collide with other atoms, causing them to split and release more energy and neutrons. Under the right conditions, this can start an uncontrolled chain reaction releasing staggering amounts of energy. One kilogram of uranium splitting is like burning four billion kilograms of coal. To help scientists control this power, the Demon Core became a focus of study at Los Alamos. Criticality experiments were an important part of this. These experiments determined exactly when a nuclear core reaches critical mass and can start a self-sustaining chain reaction. This was crucial for controlling nuclear weapons and power plants, but it was also very dangerous as pushing a core to criticality risked an uncontrolled chain reaction and deadly radiation. Renowned physicist Richard Feynman compared messing with critical mass to tickling a dragon's tail. One small mistake could lead to terrible consequences. The scientists knew this risk, but after years developing weapons to end World War II, Urgency took priority over safety at times. The war being over should have allowed more caution, but old habits died hard, as they say. If you saw pictures of scientists handling radioactive materials today, you'd see protective suits and thick lead doors covered in warning signs. In the 1940s, it was very different. Take this photo of Harry Daglian and others loading what looks like beer into a truck, but in that crate was the plutonium core for the first atomic bomb. Just 64 days after this photo, the 24-year-old Daglian died conducting criticality experiments at Los Alamos. His experiments pushed the core closer to criticality by surrounding it with neutron-reflecting material. At first, it went smoothly but a small mistake would lead to catastrophe. So Harry had been adding these tungsten carbide bricks to the core, and it was getting close to being critical. But just as it was about to hit that point, he made a mistake. He thought he had added enough bricks safely and started taking them off the barrier. But he slipped up. Instead of removing the top brick, he nudged it forward into the core by accident. Boom, instantly super critical. Harry reacted fast though. He grabbed the brick and tossed it away, but it was too late. He had already been blasted with radiation. And we all know radiation isn't something that kills you right away. 
It does damage to your cells that takes time to really mess you up. First you feel crappy with nausea and stuff, but then it gets way worse with confusion, seizures and organ failure. And man, did Harry go through it. It took him 25 days to finally succumb to the radiation poisoning. Fast forward nine months. The core, now known as the Demon Core, was getting ready to be used for some nuclear tests out in the Pacific. But first, the scientists wanted to run some more experiments. Even after what happened to Harry, they didn't really up the safety protocols. Canadian physicist Louis Sloton was a big part of continuing the experiments. A bit of a maverick. He liked showing off while tickling the dragon's tail, as they called messing with the demon core. But during his final experiment before shipping out to the tests, he had a major slip-up. Instead of using blocks like Harry, Lewis enclosed the core between two spherical shells of neutron reflective material. To keep them separated, he only used a flathead screwdriver. Crazy, I know. Well, that screwdriver slipped. The shells came together and boom, nuclear chain reaction. A flash of blue light and a burst of heat. Radiation blast. Lewis reacted fast too, but too late. According to another scientist there, Lewis's last words were, well, that does it. Yep, he was dead meat. Died in agony nine days later, just like Harry before him. The others in the room got varying doses too, depending on where they were standing. Goes to show, messing with radioactive demons is no joke. So basically, radiation intensity drops off really quickly the further you are from the source. Because of this, except for Slotin, no one else got acute radiation sickness right after the accident. However, at least two people who were there ended up dying later from radiation-related causes. The criticality accident that took Louis Slotin's life also made the Demon Core too radioactive to use in Operation Crossroads. They eventually melted it down and added it to the US nuclear arsenal. This suggests parts of that lethal core could be in other nukes we have now. When you think about the whole story, there's an ironic twist. Three bombs were made for dropping on Japan at the end of World War II. The first killed 140,000 in Hiroshima. The second took 80,000 lives in Nagasaki. But that third bomb? It ended up killing two unsuspecting scientists at Los Alamos instead. That's why they call it the Demon Core. Thanks for joining us on this journey through history, friends. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to Searching History for more, and comment down below. Until next time, keep digging, keep exploring, and keep searching.